getting back. It's the incredible Dale Valor's Inner Game Podcast. I'm rapper turned dating coach Dale Valor, your inner game wingman. Listen, here's the deal. If you're new to this podcast, what we're talking about is inner game. What is inner game? Inner game is the relationship that you have with you. If all the other relationships in your life are suffering in large part, and usually it's due to the relationship that you have with you sucks, right? So if you don't like yourself, how can you expect anybody else to, you know, either? So here's the deal, man. We're going to go deep on so many inner game concepts in this podcast. I really am glad that you're here. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. If you're a long timer, welcome back. And um, let's hop in. Hey, guys, I'm super excited for this one, man. Like, look, you know, we have rarely I I think if, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, Siobhan, but I'm pretty sure we've only done one part two with somebody with two episodes. I think that's only happened one time. Does that sound about right to you? I think so, yeah. I don't remember anyone who took a part two. <laughs> well, then they didn't make much of an impression on Shabam. <laughs> they were on twice. I don't even know, man. <laughs> but, hey, look, this was this was warranted. And, and I remember us talking in the first one, and uh, Brandon Joe Williams that's with us, uh, saying, he's like, man, I wanted to get into some inner game stuff, man. All we did was talk about my stuff. And I was like, yo, all right, let's do that. You know what I mean? And so uh, I hit him up and I was like, hey, man, you get ready to get down on that part two. And he was like, yup, let's go. And I was like, I'm mad, tired, can't do it today. <laughs> 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 and so here we are, man. I'm, I'm super excited to have Brandon Joe Williams back with us again, man. Like this is this is one of my favorite content creators. Like he's got an audience that's just awesome. Sending him pickles and pictures of pickles and, and pickles with pictures <laughs> and a picture and a pickle. And <laughs> pickled pictures. Oh my God, Hopefully man. NFTs with pickles. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> you probably already got that. Don't you? Do you got an NFT with a pickle? No, but if I ask my audience to do it, they probably do it for me. <laughs> and as always, I got my trusted confidant Shabam here, who's staying up mad late to be here. So it's <laughs> like 3 a.m. in India right now. So, <laughs> so I'm glad that he could be here to make it too. But uh, Brandon, man, awesome! Glad to have you back, bro. I've really been looking forward to this, man. And you know, one of the things, and I, I was, I was, you've been, you've been doing your thing, bro. Like. Like, no doubt, man. Like, you're blowing up everywhere, man. Um, I was watching a couple of different podcasts uh, with you uh, recently. And, and you know, like, may, maybe you've gotten into this a little bit, you know, here or there. I, I haven't consumed every every minute of what you do. Yeah. But uh, I've certainly consumed a lot of minutes. But um, I have never kind of, uh, like, see you kind of like give your backstory and what got you into what it is that you do and you know like how how this all kind of came together and manifested and and just you know um so i'd really love to get into that but before we get into that if you could give like you know an elevator pitch you know third grade explanation because you know i've got a third grade education so you know so that would be helpful um but you know, you passed third grade. What? <laughs> I was like, you passed third grade. I was like, barely, <laughs> barely, but I did, and it was on my third try too. <laughs> <laughs> Seven, so eighteen years old in third grade. grade. Knowledge, man. Yeah. You know, three third times grade. the charm, right? So, yep. um, so here's the deal. Can you kind of give like an elevator pitch, paragraph explanation? Because I know what you do is super deep. You know what I mean? I know it goes like you got your tentacles out everywhere and all kinds of legal stuff and litigation and, and all that kind of thing. But can you kind of summarize what it is that you do? Yeah. So, so I am essentially attorney and, and what I do is I study a very, very in depth into the definitions of words on the legal end. And then I'm able to convert people's 
citizenship status and nationality status, which are two totally, completely different things, by the way. Nationality and citizenship is like talking about uh, a boat versus a ham sandwich. Uh, that's how different they are. Uh, <laughs> just, I, I'm just trying to... So, so I talk a lot about that. I, I deal a lot with taxation. Taxation is tied into the citizenship versus nationality conversation. I deal with uh, uh, financials. Uh, all of my litigation specializes in financials specifically, which some of the some of the nationality citizenship uh, stuff does tie into that, but it, it, it kind of stands alone. And um, that's basically what I do. And, and a lot of what I do and a lot of what I teach and a lot of what, what my litigation is about uh, 99.9% of most people have never known that any of these various systems operate the way that I teach or the way that my litigation goes. So there's always this huge, uh, shock factor that people have when they first start looking at what I'm doing, because it's so far away from how they thought the world actually functioned that they, 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 everyone, pretty much everyone goes through a non-belief stage. Mm-hmm which is why my audience is so cool because my audience is like, um, they're like convert conversion converters or conversions. They've gone through like a tremendous amount of confusion and, and self self reflection. And, and, and they've, they've, they, they, none of them dove into my content, very few of them. And the ones who did, uh, not to be mean, but they typically don't have a, a very deep understanding of anything. And they're just kind of, they're just kind of cheerleaders. The people who have more a more deeper understanding is that it took them a long time to become a fan of mine. And most of my fans, quote unquote, are are long churn. They're not overnight fans. They're like, yeah, they're like, it, it took me eight months to become a fan of Brandon Joe Williams. That's 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 the average, maybe not eight months, maybe like because I've gotten so much better at explaining all this over the years that that originally it was probably eight months and now it's probably like one or two months. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's like, it's like a nonstop one to two months. And by the time they do actually become fans, they're, they're, they're fans, they're diehard fans basically. And I don't charge for anything. So they're not paying me anything for the information or for the knowledge. Everything I do is free. The only thing I don't, I don't do for free is the litigation. So, um, that's basically a, an overview of everything uh, in a nutshell. And then I go on lots and lots of shows like this one. I go on shows right now. I'm on a bit of a break because I have too much litigation going on, but for maybe the past two years I was doing, or maybe a year and a half, I was doing, you know, five, six, seven shows a week. Yeah. And um, I even did a tour in Austin, Texas. I did uh, two in-person uh, uh, I conventions saw that. I saw and that I did a your, bunch of yeah, really big, I and I did, and then I did a bunch of really big in-person ones like uh, Luke Story, Cal Callahan. Those are all available on YouTube. Actually, uh, Cal Callahan show that him and I did, he, the, the biggest show he had ever done in terms of YouTube uh, views was with Lance Armstrong. Mm. And whenever you typed in uh, Cal Callahan into YouTube, it would come up Cal Callahan, Lance Armstrong. Within, I think, four days, the video that I did with Cal Callahan surpassed the viewership of the Lance Armstrong video and the Lance Armstrong video had been up for, I think like a whole year. Wow. Wow. So that's, that's how, and then what I teach and what I do uh, due to inflation and fear of the future and, and a lot of the things that are going on in the political realm, what I'm doing uh, is, is, is gaining tremendous interest at this particular point in time. And so I'm on this very, 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 very sharp, almost a, a, a space shuttle type uh, upward trend at this very moment. And I don't see that trend ending anytime soon. The, 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 the thing that makes it appear as though it's not that way is because there is this sort of like Evander Holyfield punch in the face, seeing stars and duckies there. There's this sort of like, Holy shit, this can't be real. I can't believe it. Like one to two month buffer that like everyone pretty much has to go through. It's almost like a rite of passage. Yeah. So um, that, that buffer makes it seem as though it's not really happening, but, but I assure you uh, I get 8 trillion messages a day and I get craziness all the time and it's just nonstop. Uh, it is, it is a straight up and vertical trend. It's just that there, there's this buffer so yeah. what's going to happen is when you finally see truly explosive growth, where my my Instagram goes from twenty six thousand or whatever it is now to you know two hundred and sixty thousand overnight, 
you, what you're seeing is you're seeing a, a massive quantity of people that are coming out of the end of that buffer all at the same time. I That's see. not actually overnight growth. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, you just kind of farmed it a little bit. Yeah. And let's be honest, what you do is a little bit more important than riding a bike on steroids. <laughs> well, no, no, Lance Armstrong, the, the video of Cal Callahan, the, what he's talking about is perseverance, never giving up. It's it's yeah. it's an inner game. It's a lot of inner game stuff, you. actually. I got you. It's not just about biking. It's about, <laughs> um, <laughs> well, the, the Cal Callahan's podcast is called The Great Unlearned Podcast. Yeah, and, I've uh, seen it before. Okay, there you go. So yeah. so the thing is, is that it's, it, 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 it is a, it, it's a cool story of, of, of someone who went through a lot of adversity and yeah. Lance Armstrong, you know, persevered and, and it's a great story. So um, anyways, that's besides the point, but anyways, that's, that's basically what I do. And um, in a nutshell, and it's probably the best way I've ever explained it because I typically have a hard time explaining it, but I think that's probably the best way I've yeah, ever explained I get, it. I, dude, I'm not, not even going to front, man. I was telling Shabam before you came on, I was like, look, I've talked to this guy on many occasions. He's been on our podcast and I still don't really get it. Man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I still don't really fully grasp it. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I could kind of, you know, I could kind of run down some of the stuff, you know what I mean? But like, I, I'm just like, I, I, it's a, I'm having a hard time kind of wrapping my mind around exactly what it is. And I think the way you explained it now, I get it. You know what I mean? I, I understand it now, you know, that's the buffer zone. There's always that buffer zone that everyone goes through. And when I say a month or two months, I mean like a month or two months of like really thinking about it, really looking at it, really looking over their own documentation, pulling some things out of their closet. Maybe we're talking about like actually not like all day, every day necessarily, although many people do become very obsessed with this information very rapidly. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, you know, regularly thinking about it throughout the day, maybe checking a few things in the evening, maybe some late night studies, uh, some, 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 some light to medium researchy type focus for 60, uh, 30 to 60 days. Not, not just kind of like, thinking about it a couple of times a week while you're taking a shit or something like that. I mean, but you know, that, that, then it's going to stretch out to like more four five, six, seven months, but there's always, there's like a, there's like a, a um, there's like a, there, there's just a, it just is, it's just a buffer there. And, and, and it's just for, for most people, there, there are some people that's very rare, but there are some people who really get it. But, but a lot of times when I talk to people who quote, quote unquote, really get it, it's because they tried to study a lot of this stuff 10 or 20 years ago mm -hmm. and they couldn't. And they, they, they tried and they tried and they tried and they got so frustrated because the, the information was so convoluted and so difficult to understand that they just said, fuck this. None of this is real. None of this works. And they said, well, I'll just shelf this until later. And then with my information, the thing that I hear more than anything else every day that uh, uh, literally dozens of times a day is I've, I've been trying to learn this information for so long or 20 years ago or 10 years ago. And you're the first time I've ever seen someone talk about this information in a way that I can actually understand. You know, I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, you'd be the guy that would know, but my hunch is that a lot of that information is kind of scattered around, right? Oh yeah. So it's like a little piece over here and a little piece over here. And this kind of goes with this over here. And da, 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 da. and so like what the way I see it is, is you're, you've kind of compiled that information or connecting the dots. So now it forms a picture. Right. As opposed to it just, yeah. you know, just trying to find little pieces of information here or there, like some kind of weird scavenger hunt or something, you know. And I think and I think what I've done is I've gotten through two years all day, every day, investing every dollar, every moment, every thought, like hardly doing anything, hardly uh, quitting my day job because it took up too much of my time, even though it was only three days a week. Uh just, just immersing myself in it so much. I have all these different types of currencies. I've got old Confederate currency. I've got oh, wow. all sorts of flags and also I got, I got all over the place. I got original signed hand signed Confederate notes. I've got, I've got all sorts of different That's gold crazy. coins, silver coins, custom coins, uh, us marshal patches for police. I've got, it's just everywhere. It's a full, full, full immersion. I've got special license plates on my car. A everything in my life is completely immersed in this subject for two plus years, solid nonstop. And I feel like I've just gotten barely to the point where I can explain everything and I have enough of the pieces put together that, that people can start to see 
the outline or the ghost of the whole rest of the picture. Not that none of us can really see the whole thing yet. Yeah. But I feel like I'm the first guy or one of the first guys, I don't know. Or there's also the fact that it's the internet age. There's also the fact that I'm goofy and making fun of myself and wild. And there's the entertainment aspect of it, which is kind of new to this kind of information. This information is typically very dry. So, so I feel like I've, 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 infuse entertainment and I've got enough of the pieces to where like the bottom left corner of this huge picture is there's enough there to where people go and they can kind of see where it's going to go. Yeah. And, and I think that's kind of where I'm at now. And it's so shocking because when people kind of see where it's going to go and they kind of see that, Oh my God, he's really, he's really painting this picture. That's really there. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's, it's people get very, very excited. It's, it's exciting too, because everyone wants to contribute to the, to this picture. Yeah. So you also have this thing where everybody is, is just like what, what is taught in uh modern success or modern flirting or whatever it is yes. these days. <laughs> the idea that, 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 because I learned this from, from you guys, one of the most important things I ever learned from the program was, you know, that of what you contribute into, you become invested into and that kind of thing, like what Jared teaches. Yeah. And, and it's that same idea. Um, uh, for this, everyone right. wants to come in and contribute and they all become very invested very rapidly. So uh, understanding once understanding occurs and people start to see the big picture, they start to invest very, 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 very heavily. Um, and that's what creates such a strong, uh, of a, a friendship and, and connection and membership into yeah. it, it's, it's, t- it's hard to say membership because I, I technically have my own nation, but membership is not, we don't have like a membership uh, uh, application or something like that. It's actually a self applicating self governing type of system. Yeah. Anyone can join. I don't really care. I don't even want to hear about it kind of a thing. Uh, so, so, cause I just don't have the time to deal with it. So, um, so, so it's just kind of an interesting setup the way it is, but the, the membership and how people are, we've got our own flags. We've got multiple flags. This is one of them here. Yeah. I, I um, see that. So we have multiple flags now. I'm working on. Uh, I'm going to be working on uh, diplomatic identification cards, and then also our own passports. That's on my long list of things that I'm currently about to work on or working on. So uh, we already have our own license plates for cars. So there's a lot happening. A lot happening. <laughs> Get your seat at the UN. Like that would be dope. That, that's that's on my list. <laughs> that's on my list. I'll probably create a relationship with the Department of the Interior first before I do that. But yes, it's on my list. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. You know what you should do, man? I take this for what it's worth, man, but this would be hilarious. If you did a video like talking about currency and how what what it really means and all that kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Have you going around trying to spend that money, that Confederate money, like going like to like the the liquor store or something? Yeah. <laughs> 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 or going to buy gas? Yeah. Yeah, let me get uh what is this? This is a hundred of what is it a hundred fundable in Confederate stocks, uh Confederate state stock bearing eight <laughs> percent interest bonds <laughs> ratification between I can't even read it states uh, one hundred dollars. Okay, one hundred dollars. Yeah, let me get look. I got to fill up my tank, man. I know you're in California, so gas prices are through the roof. Like, let me get a hundred on five. Um, you guys take this, right? I mean, it's endorsed by Jefferson Davis. Like, yeah. you know, like <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It's funny, you know, the terminology. That's cool. Receivable in payment of all dues except export dues. That's what it says. <laughs> Man, people would bug out, man. <laughs> like, no, nah, man. Yeah. This is this is actually legal tender. Like, if I tried to give this to someone and they didn't take it, I could sue them and I would win in court. It would just take forever, but it'd be kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Try to pay your your cell phone bill. <laughs> send, it, send in a Confederate a Confederate bond note from from eighteen sixty one on if registered mail. Percent compounded interest from eighteen sixty one will get you like. I'm trying to pay a lifetime's worth of salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, right let's put, put the rest on my on my account. Put the rest on my account. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's true. You can overpay. You can overpay your 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 treasure. You can overpay any bill. They have to put it on the account. So it's kind of funny. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> so how? I mean, like, where did all this start, man? 
Like, how did all this kind of, you know, get the ball rolling and, you know, like we're, we're you know, a little of your backstory, you know? I was, um, I took on a new company, a, a landscaping company, and I was being attacked by the employment development department. They, they, uh, they uh, uh, trespassed on one of our properties and um, that we were working at. So they, they, they trespassed onto someone else's property. Really. It wasn't even ours. Uh, and, and, and um, they read up this bill and they said that, you know, you have illegal workers and blah, 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 and all this horse shit. And I said, no. And they were coming after us for a lot of money and we didn't really have any money. There was no profit hardly coming out of it at all. So for the first while, cause it was all messed up. And uh, that's really what started all this. I was trying to solve the problem and I was going to uh, accountants and lawyers and they told me to make a payment plan. And I'm like, make a payment plan for what? What the hell am I paying for? That doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah. And I wasn't going to do that. I thought the lawyers are, and, and accountants were pathetic lunatics. Um, and um, realized that, you know, I thought for sure, I thought this has got to be, there's got to be something more to this. And I just couldn't find anyone uh, that would tell me anything. No one knew. No one knew what to do. No one, no one had any idea. And so um, it led me down this rabbit hole uh, that just went deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And then I started researching into corporate structures and trusts. And then I created a private irrevocable trust that it's not located in the United States. And I moved all the assets and all the bank accounts and I opened bank accounts and um, I actually uh, found this really hot, uh, branch manager of a, of a, a, a branch here in LA. And I was going from bank to bank to bank, trying to open this, this crazy trust that everyone was freaked out by and didn't want to touch. And I found this gorgeous woman and, uh, just started kind of hitting on her. And I just kind of basically fell in love with this woman. She's a, she was just a, one of the sexiest, most unique women. And she just she was so feminine, just drove me crazy. And she just, she just fast tracked everything. I mean, she just, it was just like she, a lot of these banks, they want to send everything to their legal department. She was like, Nope. She just fast tracked me all the way through. She had the notary come from the back and she opened up everything right there live. And, um, it's just been, um, uh, I moved all the assets into the trust. I moved all the trucks. I moved all the titles of all the vehicles into the trust. And at that time, uh, the EDD couldn't, couldn't touch anything. I mean, they, 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 I had taken away all their ability to touch anything, to govern anything, to issue orders for anything. And, uh, I realized I can keep fighting them, but there was no reason to. So I just, I just said, I just stopped responding and they just kind of went away because they, there's nothing they could do. So that's kind of how I won that battle. But, um, after I, I did that, uh, which was like several months of nightmare shit trying to figure all that out. After I finished that, I was like, well, there, there, there's a lot more rabbit holes here that I have not explored into all these different areas. And I find this also fascinating. And it's a, a huge industry. Everyone wants this and no one knows how, to, knows how to do it. But but it wasn't like a business move. It was just out of pure interest. Pure like, oh my God, this is so fascinating. It, it just It just became all I wanted to talk about and all I wanted to do and all I wanted to research all day, every day. And, um, here we are fast forward from that time, uh, about two years and, uh, no, no, about two and a half two almost three years from that time period. And, um, wow. That was that's, three years ago. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. I thought you were going to say this. Yeah, back in 2004. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? No, this is a this is a lot of why I came out of the program, actually. Oh wow! Yeah, because all this stuff was going on and all this shit, and then and then and then I started getting a lot of fans that are that are girls, hmm. and then I started getting a lot of fans that are girls, and then I started getting a lot of love letters and naked photos, and and that that's kind of when I was like, well, I I I mean, I don't you know. I've obviously hit the jackpot here. Uh, <laughs> so, so then at that point, that's when I came out of the program because I was like, I was like, I don't even, you know, I don't even have time to respond to the love letters I'm getting. Yeah. So that's, that's when everything flipped. But, but, you know, up until that point in my life, uh, uh, women, I mean, I literally have never existed on women's radars ever in my entire life, ever. I, I had to, uh, a six, seven, eight months of online dating to find one date 
And then, you know, two or three of those in order to find a girlfriend. And and by the time I'd find a girl who even remotely liked me, I would try to latch onto her as hard as and aggressively as I could Mm -hmm. and keep her around as as long as I could, despite, you know, anything and just terrified of her ever going away. Cause I knew that if she did, I'd be fucking gone in in the middle of the ocean, trying to swim drowning by myself for two years before I'm going to find another one. Uh, that the, the, my whole life has been that way. So it's, so it's a very, um, And that's why last time we were talking about this stuff and I wanted to get into the inner game stuff myself because it's been a long road for me, my friend. It's been a long road. You know, I mean, if you were having that level of, you know, no success, right. Yeah. To, you know, the the skyrocketing results, you know, and, and, you know, and I'll tell you, man, you know, the way that I see it, um, you know, and, you know, I don't know the, the whole story, obviously that's why you're here to tell it, but uh, the way I see it is, is that you fell into I mean, kind of by accident, but to your credit, you embraced it, you know, uh, fell into that purpose, you know, and when you align yourself with purpose, everything starts to kind of bubble, you know what I yeah. mean? Not just that one particular area, right? It's like you're, you're, uh, your relationship life, your professional life, your, uh, I mean, well, your health, you could let that go if you wanted to, I argue you shouldn't, but, you know, but even still, you know, all these things, because you have fallen into that purpose and you want that purpose to develop as much as you can, because why? Because it's your purpose, right? So like what you do, like, I could never do that, man. Like, that's so not my world. And like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's not something that would be interesting to me on a day to day basis, like really being obsessed with this, you know, and, and that's fine, you know, because that's not my purpose, you yeah. know. Um, and and the, the thing with that is, is that, you know, a lot of times the word obsessed gets a bad rap. You know, people are like, you're obsessed. It's like, yeah, (laughs) you know, of course I am. Because it's the driving motivator for you to keep pushing forward. And even when you, and I'm sure you've suffered setbacks, right? I mean, it hasn't been all smooth sailing from jump. I mean, maybe it has, but. God, no. (laughs) But instead of hitting that roadblock and be like, well, maybe this ain't it. It's like, no, got to find a way through this because this is, this is what I do. This is who I am. If I give up on this, I'm giving up on myself, Mm -hmm. you know, and and you are such a clear representation of that to me, you know, because so many people are just like, well, you know, nine to five or, you know, trudge around through life. They're just existing for the sake of existing. Like, yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, just living, yeah. pay bills and consume food and watch TV and go to work and do it all again the next day. You know what I mean? And that's so unfulfilling, you know, yeah. like, but when you find that purpose, it's like everything else, you know, kind of falls by the wayside. And it's like, no, nope, this is it. This is what I'm doing. You know, yeah. now that purpose may shift over time, you know, 20 years from now, you might be doing something different. Who knows? Nobody has a crystal ball. But I know for me, you know, my purpose at 20 isn't the same purpose I have at 47, you know, mm-hmm. so and maybe at 67, it's not going to look the same as it is now. Right. But yeah. in the here and now, I'm doing what, I, what we're doing right now. This is it. You know, inner, talking inner game stuff, you know, like. This is what I, I, my passion, what I live for, you know? And so, uh, you know, hats off to you that you were like, yeah, man, this, okay, this is it. This is me. Yeah. And as an nice. extension, not, <laughs> I know I keep rolling and rolling, but no, as an good. extension of that, like how many people that you've helped due to that purpose, right? It yeah. might not be their purpose either, but they need somebody whose purpose it is to help facilitate things in their life. Taxes aren't my purpose. I can't sit down and do taxes for people, but thank God there's people that can do it. You yeah. know what I mean? Who, who do feel like it's their purpose or a doctor. I can't do brain surgery. You know, like it's gonna be a bad day for both of us. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I understand that. Yeah. 
but thank God it's somebody's purpose, you know? So yeah, that like, that's awesome. So what, when did it like hit you though? Like, like you, you had the landscaping company and then you, you, you know, all that stuff that went down with all of that. But like, when did it really hit you? Like, man, I'm on to something here. Um, I had a, a client of mine named uh, Nancy Kramer and she was trying to invite me to her house to tell me about a lot of this stuff for like two, two and a half years. And I kept telling her, no, I thought she was crazy. <laughs> and then finally I had this EDD problem. I know. And then finally I had this EDD problem. EDD, it, just so anybody doesn't know. That's the employment development department. The okay. one I was talking about <laughs> earlier, the, the payroll mafia police here in California. I got you. Okay. And, um, I finally called her and I said, Hey, I've got this problem. And, and I thought of you and she said, come over. And that's, that's kind of how it all started. But she was trying to tell me about this real kind and real gentle. She was trying to tell me about all this stuff for like two, two and a half years. And I thought she was crazy. I thought there's no way any of this could be true. She's crazy. I just needed, I just needed a, a big enough issue or a big enough impetus to push myself into listening to a quote crazy person. And you know, that's, that's the same world I'm living in now. Now I'm the crazy person. Right. And now there's so much inflation and so much crazy taxation and so much health related uh, political discussion and so much this and so much that and so much this that it's it's pushing people over to uh, come come talk with the crazy medicine man in, in his crazy tent up in the mountain. <laughs> and everyone's trying to come talk to the crazy medicine man in his tent up on the top of the mountain. And it's just crazy. Uh, that's that's really the world I live in. That is the world I live in. Yeah. Okay. So now I know that, you know, like with your following and the amount of people that reach out to you and stuff like that, what's a, like, a, what's a good example of somebody who um, was just lost in the sauce, man, you know, and they came to you and you helped them sort things out and, and it really turned things around for them financially or, whatever legally but whatever the case may be i get i get messages every single day i get so many i can't even i used to i used to post them on my fan art and submissions page on my website yeah but now i just get so many uh every single day that i just i only post every once in a while there'll be one that really touches me and i'll post it but besides that i get them all the time some of them are very convoluted some of them i, I can't even understand and they go on and on and on about something and, and, and they had some kind of success in something, but I can't even understand what it was. And I don't have the time yeah. to try to figure it all out. There's a lot of that kind of stuff too. Uh, because the thing is, is that it's, 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 it, this, this stuff is so weird and so convoluted and so complicated that someone can have a success and they can't even explain to you what happened. I actually, I actually get a lot of those, to be honest with you. Something happened and I, I don't even know how and this and that. I'm like, what are you even fucking talking about? They're like, this is fantastic. You're the best guy in the world. I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. That's like, that's like 25% of all the success story. I'm not even kidding. It's a huge percentage. And you know what I always do? I, I always just send little emojis or thumbs up. Great job, man. Really? I have no fucking clue what they're talking about. And I just say, great job. Really glad you're having a good time. Really glad that you're, you're having success with information. And I just pray in the back of my head. They don't, they don't ask me anything or say anything else. Cause if they do, I'm fucked. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm dead serious. 25 to 35% of all the messages that I get fit in that category. <laughs> now I know why Dale gets the thumbs up. <laughs> and they go on and on and on and on. You're the greatest and the pickles and the pickle terrier. And I'm a pickle for life. And it's the greatest thing in my family and my, 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 my wife. And she thought I was crazy. And blah, blah, blah. this is the greatest thing I'm going to be doing. It. I study all night long. I'm not even sleeping. I'm, I lost my job, but it's all good. I'm happy. I'm the happiest I've ever been. Fuck that job. Anyways, blah, blah. And, I, and I read the, I read, I scan over it. I don't have a lot of time to read it all. And I, I have no fucking clue what they're talking about. <laughs> 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 that's hilarious that's too funny man i get these long humongous emails and messages all the time i mean we're talking if you put it on a full document like maybe a page and a half two full pages um all the time all yeah. the time constantly would you say that your audience is pretty uh like pretty diverse or is it like you notice a trend of like like i'll just say what i what my, my thought process is right now I would venture to say that you have a lot of people that are libertarians that follow you. 
I have a lot of people from all politics. I even have, uh, I don't even know if it's the right term anymore, but I even have people who have gone through sex changes. I have, I have plenty of those. Uh, I have, I have all, I have everything, everything you can possibly dream of. Okay. I've got it. Uh, in terms of an overall percentage, the, the highest percentage uh, is probably people who are conservatives who, who have lost hope in the system and they've lost hope in everything. Yeah. I do have a lot of people who are involved in, 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 in various things like QAnon, of which I am not a personally a member of, but I, I have some close friends that are, we're very into that. Yeah. I have people who are, who have fallen away from the liberal side. Um, I have lots and lots of anarchists, tons of anarchists. I can see that. that I have libertarians. I have, I have everything, everything you can possibly think of. But I would say the one thing that unifies all of us. And the one thing that we all have in common is we have serious issues and we're very scared about those issues and we're looking for solutions. I would say that's, that is really the only thing that it, it's so diverse and it's so all over the place that, that I would say that's really the only thing that, that is really the, the patternized common denominator of everyone involved in this. And to be honest with you, I feel like I'm a white man in a black man's world. And the reason why I say that is because if you look at a lot of the great teachers in the space, uh, you, you will find that a lot of them are black and, and you will find that black America, uh, makes up for a huge percentage, in my opinion, by far the largest percentage of overall people that are interested in this information, learning this information and teaching this information. And, and a lot of that comes down to, and I've talked to so many black men and black women that, that there, there's, there's, there's a lot of concern about police violence. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a lot of concern about, about, uh, not being treated very well, even in banking information or being hired for a job or because of the, the way that their name is written or spelled or, or just anything you can think of. And it's just a, a desire to understand why they're, they're, they're really getting the short end of the stick in a lot of areas. And, and, and so the, you know, the, the black culture kind of fits into two categories from my opinion, from, from all my experiences. I'm not, I'm not trying to categorize here. I'm trying to be, <laughs> I, I really, this is from my experiences only. Okay. I, again, I feel like a white man in a black man's world. So I've tried to understand as much as I can by talking to as many people as I can. Mm -hmm. And because of those talks, what I realized is that there's two categories. There's the victim category and there's the non-victim category. The non-victim category, a lot, every single black guy I ever talked to who fits the non-victim category. And he's like, I, I really want to do something about this. I want to fix these issues in my life. And I want to figure out why I get the short end of the stick all the time. They're the ones who are really, really active in, in these groups. They're the ones that are really teaching a lot of this information. To be honest, if you removed the black culture from, from the, this whole movement, you, you would remove probably 70% of the movement. Wow. Really? Maybe, maybe 60, 60 to 70% of the movement. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the movement would instantaneously be entirely crippled. It would continue to move forward, uh, but at a much, much lower rate of speed, it wouldn't destroy the movement. It would just, it would just, it would just send it all the way back to being like four years old again and have to relive, you know, re grow up all over again from, from scratch. Um, there, there are, now a lot more white people and other other races and and so that are coming into this information and and being more interested in this information especially with all the political and financial unrest that's occurring right now but mm -hmm. uh i think i think mainly it's a, it's a, it's it's been a, a very african american or however you want to say it melanated or you know there's different terms uh i think that's really been what what this what this whole subject has been uh uh floated by mostly yeah, there has been a handful of really um, influential white people that have that have gotten into this. I don't know of any Latin people or Asian people or anything. It's just mainly a lot of black guys and and a, a few white guys, and that's it. Wow! I mean, really? it, it, even even the idea of women uh, teaching this information is fairly new. I mean, up until several years ago, it was it was mostly black men and and a few white men, and that was it. I mean, we're talking end of story. Wow! So. You had mentioned, you said how much that your inner game growth has been, you know, from, I don't know how far back, but till now, 
right? What 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 are, what are some of those growth moments? Like what what where did you come from, inner game wise to get you to where you are now? Like what what did you overcome? What did what did you learn? What did how how did that start to manifest? <laughs> Well, uh, when I was really, really young, I was 19 years old and, um, I went to college. I had my first girlfriend there and, um, you know, that was really scary for me. And then when I came back, um, I flunked out of college really bad. And so my mom was very, very sick. I'm going to give you the very short story. It's a long story. I'm going to give a very short version. She got very, very sick. We couldn't figure out why she was getting surgeries. Uh, got a half her thyroid removed, just made things worse. Couldn't figure it out. So she went to the library and started reading all these books. And one of the books that she read, um, now she was reading everything. She's reading Tony Robbins, yeah. Eckhart Tolle, uh, 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 you know, philosophy, feel good, nutrition, food, extra, I mean, you name it, everything under the sun, moon and stars. Mm-hmm. And she ended up reading this book called Dianetics, which later became the religion Scientology. Right. right? Yeah. And she said, this book Dianetics is really amazing. And she called a, a, a house meeting. We all got together, a family meeting. And she said, this book is mind blowing and it has something to do with this, this religion. I don't know anything about it. And I want to go to Chicago and check it out. And we're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, we've been Lutherans our whole lives. I had never heard, I grew up on a farm. I had never heard any of this terminology of Scientology or any of these things in my life. Yeah. And I said, fuck it. I'll go to Chicago. I got nothing else to do. I'm flunked out of college, sitting at home playing Grand Theft Auto 3 or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> doing fuck all of my life. Right. So, so I thought, okay, yeah, sure. We'll go to Chicago. You know, I hardly ever go to Chicago. When I say hardly ever, I mean, I mean, literally hardly ever. Um, and it's right there. It's an hour and 20 minutes West of, of my location, um, in, in Northwest Indiana. And I said, okay. So we go to this church and, uh, I did a course and I, it's all course based. It's got course rooms and stuff. It's all courses, courses, courses. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I really liked it. And then I, I moved to Chicago and I started working for the church and I started doing a lot of things. So, so from, from 19 years old, all the way up until the first lockdown in COVID, yeah, I was either working at the church. I was heavily involved in therapy at the church, or I was doing what's called professional training to become what's called an auditor, which is a, a therapist essentially right. uh, for basically all of from 19 all the way up to 2020. So that would be from 2005 to 2020. So for about uh, 15 years, all I did is either work for the church or I was at the church doing uh, courses or doing auditing or doing something pretty much all day, every day, whenever I wasn't working or doing something else. Mm -hmm. Or if I was working for the church, I was really there all day long, every single day. Well, I mean, we're talking 10 hours a day, seven days a week. So I worked for the church for in Chicago and then in Los Angeles and then in New York city. And, um, New York city was my last stint working for the church up until about 2014, 2015. And during that time, uh, that that's kind of a lot of the inner game stuff that I was doing and working on. And, and one of the main things that I was doing when I was working for the church was I was on the streets uh, inviting people to come in and do either a free personality test or see a free film about what we're doing at the church. Yeah. And I figured I'm out here and I'm talking to all these people. It might as well be pretty girls. <laughs> so, so what happened <laughs> was, it always comes back to that, don't it? <laughs> so what happened was, yeah. Now I was working in Times Square in New York city. So yeah. we're talking about, you know, gorgeous women from all around the world, Barcelona, Brazil, Japanese girls. I mean, pretty girls from every single country on the planet walking through there. And they're all very, very excited to meet American men. I mean, it's, 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 it's probably the greatest, the greatest time period of my entire life. I mean, I love my life now. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, it was just, I would just stop pretty girls all day. And I had this whole skit that I developed where I would yeah. say, wow, wow, just stop, stop, stop. And where are you from? You are, you are both gorgeous. And I'd grab both her hands and I kiss one and I kiss the other one. And I'd be like Rico Suave. And I'd be like, where, where are you from? They'd be like, oh my God, we're from Barcelona. And I'd be like, oh my God, Barcelona. That's incredible. I'd be like, hey, I really want to tell you, have you ever seen about this film, Dianetics? And I'd pull up the little tickets and I'd hand it to them. And they go, no, I haven't. And I go, you got to check this out. And I would spin around. I'd do like a little fl- flurry and I'd spin around and I'd put my arms out like chicken wings. And I'd have one girl on this arm and I'd have one girl on this arm and I would just 
hit on them and kiss their cheek. And, and it, it got, it got, it got so crazy at one point in time after doing this for like a year or two that everyone in all of times square, you know, we all know each other. You got the hot dog vendors, you've got the, the comedy ticket sales guys. And I haven't been there in a decade, so it might've changed a little bit, but I doubt it. You've got the, the dancing girls who are always, um, advertising the, the local, um, shows because yeah. you have all the different Broadway shows. You've got the, uh, the, the art vendors. There's always art vendors out there. You've got, you know, and there's a lot of the people are regulars, right? Like, especially the comedy ticket sales guys. Uh, they're all regulars. They're all crazy as hell, by the way, they're hilarious. Uh, and, and we all, and, and I, I, I ended up being known in all of times square as the guy who has always got pretty girls on his arms. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it got to the point, it got crazy though. It got pretty wild. So it started getting to the point where I started putting the promo pieces in my mouth and having the girls take it with, with their mouth. And I started, and I started putting the promo in their mouth and being like, there you go. That's it. That's, that's you're good. And I, it started to get fucking nuts. Right. And I started bringing the girls in and then I would, I would walk them up the stairs with their hands and I'd kiss their hands. And I'd be like, these lovely ladies are here to see the film. And they'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 th that whole time period of my life which happened for like two entire years of my life was just me trying to break my fear of women basically with just like brute force essentially that's yeah. i i didn't know what else to do there was no modern success there was no any of these things i had no clue and if there was i didn't know fucking way i could afford any of that i was making nothing so the thing is is it's 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 um it's one of those things where, uh, I just, I just met, you know, and then I ended up meeting this girl who's a dentist on the street and she's gorgeous. She's from Hong Kong, Cantonese girl. And we hit it off. And then that's how I got into doing dentistry and dental offices. And I helped her build up her dental office. And we bought a really nice space on East 60th street and we built it out. Uh, you know, you know, sparkled marble, everything and crazy, everything and all the good stuff. And the, the purple dental chair, she wanted the purple dental chairs. It's like a real soft purple. It was actually pretty classy. And uh, we, we, that's how I got into doing dentistry. And then when I came back to LA from New York, I got into another dental office. That's where all my experience was. So, so a lot of the inner game stuff came from that. I would say that time period. And then during that same time period is when I started to do a lot of reading. Well, man, I know that you got a lot of information out of this particular episode. Listen, if you need to go a little bit deeper, always feel free to reach out to me. Look, there's a few ways you can do that. You can shoot me an email. You can send me a DM. I'm easy to find. But the best place that you can find me is at freegiftfromdale.com. It's in the uh, description of the episode. And you're going to get a couple of free gifts there. You'll get the... Uh, uh, first chapter of my book, Inner Game, and you will also find an exercise to help you find out about yourself and who you really, truly are at the core, okay? And listen, if you haven't subscribed to the channel or the podcast, make sure you do so, man. It takes you one second to do it, and it means the world to us here, okay? Uh, if you know somebody who could really use this information, feel free to share it, man. Don't don't hold it to yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, we will see you in the next one.